In this video we're going to look at wants. Now wants and ends, we'll use the words interchangeably, wants and ends, these appear in the Robbins definition of economics. Robbins has a very uh, famous definition of economics, one which uh, virtually all students of economics know and love. The Robbins definition is that economics is a science which studies human behaviour as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. So it's a relationship between ends and scarce means. Ends are our wants. So we have to look at the balance between our wants and the scarce means of production. How we can satisfy those wants. So let's look at ends and see what's associated with this idea of wants or ends. Ends may be considered as wants, as I said, it's the ends, uh, that's why we're working, that's why we, uh, we participate in uh, a working life. We want to acquire the resources to satisfy our wants. Um, we've all got wants, we have wants that are generated from various sources and as I said, we we'll look at these in the course of this video. Means are the methods we use to satisfy our wants. So means would include production and agriculture and the extractive industries and manufacturing and services and so on. These are the means by which we satisfy our wants. Now the origins of wants, well, wants for a start lead to our demand for goods. So our demand for goods and services is, starts as wants and that is essentially a psychological thing. That is within our heads. Our wants are our desires. Sometimes our wants are very basic. We want food or shelter, clothing. Uh, these are very basic wants, but we satisfy those first. It's similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is uh, dealt with in other videos on the course. But we satisfy the basics and then we move up to the next level of want. When we've satisfied our, satisfied our need for food and shelter and clothing and so on, and heating, we move up to perhaps looking for the next layer up, which may be some items of luxury, small luxuries, and then further up even more luxuries and until we get to the, the top of the pyramid. And that's in the context of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we could Sim we could see a similar process here. So wants lead to our demand for goods. That's the point. We demand goods and services because we have a want for them. And they arise in our heads. It's a psychological phenomenon. It's what we require and how we, we rate the goods we require, require. How do we prioritize them? And that's our evaluation process. That's, that's the way we think about the goods could be biological. The satisfaction of our biological and cultural needs require a wide range of goods. Biological needs could be, as I said, food, shelter, other basic requirements for life. And that could be the basis for our, our needs. We go shopping because we have a need to satisfy food requirements. We, we go shopping to buy items for our homes to make them more comfortable. There are also cultural needs, recreational goods and luxury goods. Recreational needs is when we're not working, we need to be happy, we need to enjoy life. So we have cultural needs, recreation ones, members of social clubs and sports clubs and we may have recreational goods associated with traveling because we like to travel or luxury goods. Some people may be interested in buying old cars and renovating them or some people may be interested in uh, luxury f items of fashion. And these could be related to cultural needs. So we want food and shelter but we also want luxury goods and once one range of one range of goods is satisfied we tend to move upwards to the next one. So our wants tend to be onward moving in fact, we, we seem to have unlimited wants. 
we satisfy one set we move up to the next set we satisfy that we move up higher still so we're always looking for something else so we seem to have infinite wants and that seems to be a part of the human condition culture well our tastes change over time we're we're not the same now as we were so many years ago and we will change as the world changes around us into the future new technologies new way of thinking new products we will change as well we're in this constant state of change and our tastes change over time the goods and services we require changes over time there are constantly changing fashions and trends in society uh, it's the way we live uh, it's the way we are as a species we have constant change and we desire change we don't like routine the same thing all the time we want change and we want to follow different trends there are pressures to conform and they, these pressures may be related to the activities of the advertising industry who try to get us to conform they start a particular fashion let's say in clothing and try to persuade us that uh, we must have items designed in that way and after a while that fashion takes over so there was no need it was just someone decided to change fashion and everyone followed or lots of people followed so there are cultural pressures all the time on us to conform and these may be as I said related to advertising advertising may make us feel inadequate if we haven't kept up with the latest trends the satisfaction of some wants may generate new wants uh, for example if you purchase a house you'll probably purchase furniture so you wanted a house you bought the house but now you have to buy furniture so the satisfaction of one want generates another one they're linked wants can be linked uh, if we buy a car then we have a demand for petrol or diesel the problem is that we have scarcity that's at the center of economics and resources are scarce relative to our wants our wants tend to be infinite as I said very large always increasing and there are more of us on the on the planet we've all got wants so as the the total of the demand in the world grows the total number of wants that need satisfaction grows there is a pressure of scarcity as I have said in other videos we live on a small planet that circles the Sun uh, it's got finite resources the only resources we have are on the planet and that's where we live so resources are scarce relative to our wants so when resources are scarce we have to pay for their production and this is where the whole economic system really starts it starts as this interplay between our wants and the scarce resources that are available and we have to pay to get these scarce resources and to satisfy our wants we might have to pay someone to process the raw materials so into an item that satisfies our wants we have to pay for the extraction of the raw material from the earth we have to pay for the fact that it's scarce in general the more scarce an object is relative to customer demand the more expensive it will be so we can link scarcity to price for example diamonds are very scarce and therefore very expensive diamonds are very scarce relative to ends to wants there was a as a sidetrack here there was a big debate back in history about how the price of products came about uh, some people believed the price of products was related to the amount of work incorporated in the product 
So an expensive car will cost more than uh, obviously a cheaper car, but it'll cost more because it's got more work involved, more more man hours, more people involved in it. And that seemed to be um, the dominant view of how prices came about. The more people it took, or the more hours it took to make something, the more expensive it would be. That's sometimes called the labour theory of value. Uh, and the labour theory of value is actually a very complex theory, but not doing it justice. But roughly, that's that's what it means. It means the more that the more people involved in the production process, the more expensive the item will be. The problem with that was, of course, you could have a lot of people producing something that nobody wants. So they've produced something, nobody wants it. What's the value? Well, the value is nothing. So the fact that people, were, a lot of people, were making something, using very high skills maybe to make something, but nobody wanted it, then it was no of no value. Um, there was a very famous paradox back in, in history, as I said. It's called the Water Diamond Paradox. And it was very difficult to, to resolve it. It was debated in many parts right throughout the Middle, the middle Ages. Um, essentially, I'm not doing it justice here, but essentially what, what it was saying was that diamonds were more expensive than water. Well, we tend to agree with that, generally speaking. But what if we're in the middle of a desert? We're in the desert and we haven't had a drink for a couple of days, we're out of water, and someone gives us a choice, a one-off choice between having a big diamond or a bottle of cold, cool water. Which will we pick? Well, we'd probably pick the water. So why is it the water seems more valuable there than the diamond? And yet, if we go into a city, and give someone a one-off choice between a big diamond or a bottle of cold water, they'll pick the diamond. So in cities, they will pick the diamond, or in towns or wherever, or out somewhere outside of a desert, they will pick the diamond. But in the desert, the chances are we'd pick the water. So, why? Well, that was resolved, really, by Alfred Marshall, who's the father of economics. Alfred Marshall solved it in 1890 in The Principles of Economics his textbook and in his general writings. Uh, he solved it by saying that scarcity is how value comes about. It's scarcity relative to need, relative to want. Lots of things are scarce but we don't want them. The common cold is scarce as a virus perhaps but we don't want the common cold. So it's scarce relative to want. Now, what Marshall suggested was that in the desert, water is scarce. Relative to want, it's more scarce than the diamonds. The diamonds are not really wanted in the desert. It's water that's required. So water is more expensive. Whereas in a town or in a city or somewhere outside of the desert, the choice between a diamond and water, well, diamonds are scarce. Water is not that scarce. We can always get a bottle of water or a glass of water. So diamonds are scarce, which means it's scarcity that ter determines value. So how we resolve our wants is through the market system. We have wants, we manifest the wants in terms of demand, we back up our demand with cash, so it's effective demand, and we bid for the items we want. But it's wants that are driving the economic system. It's our needs and wants that are driving it. If we were all satisfied right now, if we all suddenly decided we had everything we want and we don't want anything else, then the system would come apart. We don't need the workers to produce new items, we don't need new products, the whole economic system would stop. It's the fact that we have increasing demands that keeps the system moving. That's all I'm going to deal with here. It's a little more philosophical than perhaps it would suggest, the title would suggest, but uh, it's a very important topic. We need to understand why ends or wants are so important, and we also need to know what are the origins of these.
once. That's all I'm going to deal with, so I'm going to leave it there and say thank you for watching.